Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of the Pixar Post podcast. As usual, I'm TJ. And I'm Julie. And in episode 19, we're going to talk about uh, quite a few things. We're going to talk about Disney Infinity, the month of October for Pixar. We're going to talk about Toy Story of Terror. And then just to kick off, uh, we wanted to say congratulations, a big congratulations to forum user CSP131, which is Craig P., who is the winner of our sweepstakes for the free Disney Infinity Toys R Us exclusive Crystal Lightning McQueen. And this is one of your favorite characters. Yeah, I absolutely love it. It's so much fun to play with, uh, you know, because you get the extra experience points. So when you go to the Hall of Heroes, you get to see the... You get to see all your character go to the next level and all those kind of things. It builds more levels in there. It's just super cool. So, yes, absolutely. And then, speaking of, uh, oh, about around the words of contests, be sure to stay tuned because we're actually going to be announcing our next sweepstakes in just a few days. And this one's going to have a little bit of a Monsters University flair. So it's going to be tying in with the movie coming out, a little bit of back to school. So... Keep your uh, eyes peeled for that one. We're not going to reveal it on the podcast this time. You got to know where we're going to. You got to search where we're going to find it. Yes, where you're going to find it. So, and then also for the forum, we wanted to say congratulations to forum user Mac ninety five. Uh, he is the first user to cross over the fifty post mark. And obviously, we're not trying to foster a community where people are just posting just to reach a certain tier or just put stuff out there. I mean, he's actively posting and answering questions and things like that. But what that did is that moved his member title uh, up and so right now everybody else is at uh, beginning member slash luxo junior right so they're kind of like more you know just you know we're getting people into the thing swing of things because it still hasn't been open that long but mac 95 is now a member alec azam yes so one of my personal favorite short Presto, you yeah. get you get a little bit well that and party switch. I forget it. We're not going to get into the favorites thing because that debate will go on forever. Uh, but anyways, our next level after that is a little harder to get to, but one that is super near and dear to our hearts. Yes. And then we've got one that's even after that, which is even closer to our hearts and even harder to get to. Yeah. So, so the tears, I mean, they're really quite fun. Yeah, and again, it's not something that we're trying to have people just type hi, just so that way they get the thing. Yeah. We're trying to, you know, just reward people for, you know, so people can call out who the more senior members or the more active on the forum are. So it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Julie. I know, I know. You're a beginning member. I am <laughs> a beginning member. <laughs> you spend all your time on the site. I do. So... All right. Well, anyways, let's talk about Toy Story of Terror because this is some some cool stuff that's come out, and it's just a little over a month away. I know. And is how it... excited are you for this? Oh, beyond, beyond. I mean, it's gonna be so cool. All the things that we've read and seen and heard, everybody that's seen it says it's classic Pixar. Yeah, and and I don't think anyone's seen it in its entirety. I think it's only been shown ten minutes at yeah. the D twenty three Expo. So, I mean, right. it's a half an hour short. Well. 24 minutes with commercials, with commercials right 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 yeah i mean to see the first 10 minutes is amazing yeah and it seems like it's uh you know like i said it's been very well received well one of the things that came out this week was a poster or last week was a poster for the short and it's you know if you if you've essentially seen the logo and you've seen that picture of buzz glowing his glow-in-the-dark stickers Mm -hmm. with Jesse and Buzz over his shoulders, you've essentially seen the poster. The only thing that they did is they added in the castle, the spooky castle in the background. Well, hotel. It's not a castle. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) Castle. It's all majestic. Yeah. So, yeah, they added... And some spooky trees, and it's set, you know, at night. Right. So they gave it a little bit more of, like, the ambiance. Yes. Yes, the ominous feel, as you were saying there, too. So... The other thing we wanted to chat about, though, is something that's been out there for a while, but we've never really thought to post on it until our great reader, Emmett B., uh, asked a question of us through our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so there's a new advertisement that came out uh, earlier this week, uploaded by uh, William Jardine of A113 Animation, and it's a new advertisement for... Sky Broadband, which is a UK broadband company Mm -hmm. that advertises and ties in with Toy Story of Terror. So when it's being played, he asked a question about Woody's voice. He essentially says, was that really Tom Hanks' voice? It didn't sound like it. 
Well, let's take a listen to the clip here, and then you guys can judge for yourselves what it, who it sounds like. A spooky tale exclusively on Sky Movies Disney. <laughs> the Toy Story of Terror. Ah! Rex, I thought we said no scary movies. No, look! Okay, who else is on the internet? No. Perish the thought. Those are my rings. Everyone, please. Wi-Fi 2000 can't handle this many users at the same time. Wi-Fi, 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 Wi-Fi. Buzz is right. What can we do? I'll look online. No! Wi-Fi! Anyone else got any bright ideas? Sky. Demand more from your broadband. Switch to Superfast Sky Fiber. Designed with the whole family in mind. Sky. Believe in better. And no, we have not added advertisements into our podcast. That's yep. <laughs> that's the advertisement that was out there. It's pretty cool. It was fun to see the Toy Story gang out there. But the question is a valid one. So what do you guys think? Do you just instinctively know that it's not Tom Hanks? I mean, you, pretty, you said it right off the bat. I did. Um, well, it's not just this. I mean, I've noticed it in toys or video games, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, even the short, um, you know, TV shows. Right. Exactly. That, that there's Woody's been cha- voice. You know, it's not just Woody's voice. I mean, sometimes it seems like other characters. Right. Like for instance, Prickle Pants' voice was not. Uh, I'm I'm drawing a blank on the on the actor's name, uh, but he was Bond at one point. You know, th- right. it, he was not the same either. So it's very common that the names may shift. But what I think may be interesting because if you're if you were thinking that it wasn't Tom Hanks, you were absolutely correct. But what I think is interesting is it may not be voicing uh, Rex, voicing Woody, who you actually think it may be. So take a listen to this clip. It's from an interview with Tom Hanks, who explains who voices Woody in non-feature roles. You listen to this. (laughs) Ha ha, boy, am I glad to see you. Is that you? No, it's my brother, Jim. (laughs) Is it really? That's so weird, because we were on the internet, somebody said that, and we kind of, oh, that just sounds like a load of old rubbish. No, that was my brother, Jim. They they have so many... uh, There's a snake in my boot. There's a snake in my boot. (laughs) There are so many uh, computer... Oh, Sir, computer perfect. games and video things. And Jim just, he works on those all year long. And they said, you don't want to do this. He said, no, get my brother Jim. You know, he'll do it. So that's my brother Jim. That's, that's amazing. That amaz- yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely thought that was an urban myth. But it no, really is. true. It really, okay. Absolutely true. And animation films, <laughs> I would think, I would think, well, that sounds easy. But then I read it's really hard work for you anyway well it's fun work because the people are great but it is very very hard (laughs) (laughs) particularly Woody because Woody is always like yelling and he's always concerned you know (laughs) he's always doing that kind of stuff (laughs) and the way the way it works they start working on it and it takes about four years for them to uh, start animating it and get to the final product so about every six months you go into a recording studio uh, but you, you and you face the booth. You, the screen is behind you. It's because it's on on the lots. And you face the booth. And in the booth is the are these heads that look like judges at the Olympics. You know, they're just back and they're in a in a soundproof. You can't hear them, but they can hear every word you say. So you you've got you you've got a you you've got a scene where you have to say something like you're standing. And you have to do 18 variations of something like this. Buzz, if we don't get back there, I'm going to go absolutely (laughs) bizarre. That's what you have to do. And you do it every kind of way you possibly can until your diaphragm is busted, your throat is raw, (laughs) you spit all over the copy. Yeah, so... He goes on and on there and, uh, you know, continues to express more ways, but it's it's so visual. So if you want to see the clip, it's on our post. You can link through. Again, uh, for all of our show notes, just go to our website, PixarPost.com, click on the podcast tab, and then this is episode 19. The link will be there. But it, it, how great is that? But it's his brother. Yeah, and, and I wish I had Tom Hanks as a brother that I could do that kind of stuff. I know. And you know what's funny is they sound slightly different, but still... Slightly s- alike. Yes. Yeah. yeah Enough so- to be like, oh, that's, that's Woody. Right. It'll cross your mind. It's It'll cross your that, mind. It's really incredible. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty amazed to find out that it was the, the Woody Toy Story Collection toy that it, you know I knew that... It's in fact, Disney Infinity. He's going to be doing the voice for Disney Infinity in that game uh, for the Woody character. Um, 
I mean, a whole bunch of games. A lot of the iPad games that we have. Yes. Other commercials. The list goes on and on. So how cool is that, though? That You know what's funny is that interview, I think, was from 2011. Yeah. How did we not know this? Or did we hear about it? And just, I mean, I think that interview was from the UK. Yeah. So, I mean, but how... How did we not know this? Well, I mean, I think we knew it. I think we just didn't yeah, necessarily we knew, we knew investigate it, it completely yeah, we knew or it retain wasn't it. Tom, because it was almost one of those things that just kind of came and went. You know, it was yeah, like you okay, just, maybe you just don't think about it. But now that we're diving into it, right? I'm fascinated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it is. It seems like it's something that's so simple, but you just you just overlooked it. But how great is Tom Hanks as a toy uh, a, a storyteller? Oh. <laughs> storyteller, Toy yeah. Story. Like, <laughs> so yeah, storyteller to like totally immediately pull you in and be like oh it's my brother it's jim my brother. <laughs> i know and the clip is so cute too how he says it and how he looks on his face it's right like, yeah right. and he's like smiling and proud and right yeah so super cool so i mean as we mentioned it's not an uncommon thing like for instance with buzz lightyear obviously we know him as tim allen mm-hmm. but there was the buzz lightyear of star command tv series that was a shorter lived about two season t- uh, tv series and patrick warburton uh who's done everything from voice uh putty and seinfeld to the the ride at disney yeah, world he does soren soren at right right he soren. does a whole bunch of stuff. he's been on other tv shows and he's all over the place but he did uh buzz in that tv show so there's um, other big actors, more unknown actors that fill in for these roles when uh, either... And you know what's funny is I was just talking to you about this when you were playing the Incredibles playset on Disney Infinity. Mm-hmm. How I said some of the characters like, wow, they sound so similar Dash. to yeah to the actual voice actors in the feature films. Right. And I was like, what a cool job to be able to match your voice like this. Right. And then a few days later, here we are talking about Jim Hanks, who voices Woody. I just think that's kind of a neat little coincidence that it all kind of ties in that we were just, I was just talking to you about this. You're right. It was. It was on Sunday and we yeah. were talking about it. And then uh, obviously this you know, funny Toy Story of Terror commercial comes out for Sky Broadband, and then Emmett asks us the question, yeah. and that prompts us to do the post. So, pretty cool. Love how all that stuff comes together. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. It's this behind the scenes information, and just like little I don't insights, know, like fun facts. I think it's because it is like a fun fact, right? And I'm a geek about fun facts, blind Wait. bags, and fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> Blind bags and fun facts. Julie's motto. <laughs> She's got it tattooed on her arm. Yes. <laughs> um, so the other thing that we wanted to talk about, we don't want to spend a lot of time on it because it's been uh, out for a couple weeks now, is news about Bob Peterson uh, and him not being part of the active production team in the directing role at all for The Good Dinosaur. From here on out. From here on out, right. So obviously, like I said, we don't want to spend a ton of time on it. It's been talked about. We've done a lot of posts. Other people have done posts. But the one thing we really wanted to reiterate, because it was a big concern for a lot of people, and rightfully so us too, is that this directorial change hit home more than any other because of how affectionate and close people feel to Bob Peterson. Yeah, I, I, they really, I think, connect with him and feel like, yeah, that's Bob Peterson. Yeah, I, I think mean, more. I think he's just more well known, um, not discounting. Like what happened in Brave, Brenda Chapman, not a lot of, of people knew of her as much as Bob Peterson. I mean, right. Bob's the voice of so many beloved yeah, characters. Yeah, Roz, Mr. Ray, all those kind of things. But he's also been in, like, if you watch any DVD extra, he's in, like, he's every in one. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, he's in, you know, we're talking about the chimpanzee for Toy St- or for Monsters, Inc. I mean, he's doing stuff for Toy Story. You know, it, it's yeah. amazing. So, I think that this one kind of hit home a little more. So, we were worried much like other people, that what does this mean? Because there hasn't been a director yet that's been removed or changed from a pro- from a project that hasn't ultimately left Pixar. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that we felt really great about is that Bob Peterson popped up and spoke about it on Twitter and essentially said, you know, hey, it was a hard decision. Mm-hmm. But life is good. I'm having fun. Yeah, On to more things. Thanks family and friends for their, you know, support. I'm working on another pro- project for the future. Yeah. So I thought that was really good that it was almost like a little bit of a reassurance there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know other people, you know, we we don't know what would have happened with some of the earlier directors and what they would have said because right. there wasn't 
Twitter, that avenue that they were communicating. I mean, Brenda, sure, um, you know, she put some lines out there, but she essentially left relatively quickly afterwards. But I mean, there was other with Cars 2 and with Ratatouille, you know, those types of things where Twitter was either just forming or not around. Oh, for sure. Well, the Cars 2, but... Yeah, but no, but it wasn't as, you know, active, I think, as it is today. Right. Um, I guess I kind of have a different take on it where a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, Bob Peterson, he's off this project. Um, I am nowhere, I'm in no position to judge the change. Sure. If a change is made, that's great. Then they're looking for the better the better of the feature film. Something wasn't working or something and to me, I put my trust into Pixar that they're making, you know, they had to make that change. For the Whether, betterment of the story. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I forget what we saw it on, but it's, or um, it might have actually been at the Monsters U event where it's, you put your ego aside. Yeah, it was. It, it was, was when it was Peter, Peter Stone, Stone. Yeah. he was talking. And when he said, you you know, you stay in, you say an idea, you know, you pitch an idea and you have to put your ego aside if they don't like it. And I have, you know, I just feel like if something wasn't working, you know, you know, some changes had to be made. Right. I'm yeah. in no position to judge. I look for the future. I'm excited about The Good Dinosaur, whoever that director may be. You know, whether it be a lot of people are um, speculating Lee Unkridge is going to take the helm. Um, I mean, Peter Sohn is still co-director. Right. And I love Peter Sohn. Right. So I we mean, have partly that. cloudy. He directed partly cloudy, which is beautiful. Right. So yes, it's the directing team right now of yeah. John Lasseter, Lee Unkridge, Mark Andrews, Peter Sohn. Yeah, and I also think a lot of people are only being like, "Oh, Bob Peterson left." That doesn't discount the four hundred other people who are working hard on the Good Dinosaur. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Animators. Yeah. And lighting. I, I feel. I feel bad if it. You know. If he didn't really want to leave The Good Dinosaur, but I'm glad he's moving on to future projects, but I just don't want to discount the hard work and the other 400 individuals who are still on The Good Dinosaur, making sure. it an incredible film. Right. Granted, I know the director, that's you know the main person that everyone well, it, thinks. I mean, it, it, it goes across all lines of, of life. You know, if something's wrong with the company, the CEO, CEO if there's the a problem during a football game, it's the, the quarterback coach, yeah. or the coach. Yeah. You know, it's it's there's always somebody that's in that leadership position that's going to either reap the benefits or take the, you know, have to fall on the sword at some level. Yeah, and I guess you know. I just feel bad because I just feel, I just feel for all those people who are still working hard and, you know, like it's going to be a great film. Right. Just because of this little shakeup. Right. You know, yeah, absolutely. Discount everyone else who's still working hard and making this an incredible film, regardless yeah. of who the director is going Again, to be. Again, and I think what those comments were online were what we were talking about at you know when we first started talking about the good dinosaur is that it's an emotional decision you know it when you is. when you first get hit with news the first thing that usually comes out of people is their emotional response so of course when an emotional response is coming out you're not going to step back and think about it like that you're just going to say oh bob peterson's gone what is going on yeah, what's this happened? project is over oh they're gonna they're, how can they you know oh. i yeah i i totally i mean i get that oh yeah yeah, I mean, when it happened, we were like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's like, you know, then you take a step back and you think about it. So, obviously, the other thing that's up in the air at this point, uh, you know, it's been... And the producer changed, too. Right, exactly. Yeah, um, Denise Reem is stepping in, um, so she'll be taking over. She was the producer of Cars 2 as well, so kind of fresh in that production role. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see what happens. But obviously the other thing that Ed Catmull discussed in the LA Times interview about this was the time frame of the movie coming out. And at this point, they've said that they're still anticipating keeping that May, thir- uh, May 30th, is it, 2014 release? Mm-hmm. I think that's what it was. Um, so they're still anticipating keeping that date. Obviously, the speculations and the conversations have gone back and forth in a lot of different directions. You know, we don't know how much they're going to tweak. If it seems like it was a little bit, you know, they were going to tweak just a little bit, then maybe Bob Peterson could have stayed on. So who knows? We'll see. You yeah. know, only time will tell. Obviously, as you know, as you've already said, Pixar is going to make that decision for the better of the, the story. The betterment of the film and exactly. the story to make the story flow. If something wasn't working, then obviously the brain trust steps in 
and changes that. Now, I believe Bob Peterson's part of that brain trust, so I'm sure that might have been a little difficult, a little more hard, because, you know, they're all probably so close. They're all like brothers. Right. Family, you know. So here's something that I wanted to also address now that I'm saying, you know, after at the top of this, I said we weren't going to discuss it that long. But somebody did bring up a really good point in the forum as well. And I saw it on a couple other sites additionally, which is where they talked about, you know, if they brought in this team of directors, why couldn't Bob Peterson be one of that team? And that's a hard thing. Because obviously your initial reaction is, again, you love Bob Peterson. Yeah. You want to say, well, of course he should be part of that team. But. Yes. Now, if I was working on a project, co-directing, say I was co-directing with you, Mm -hmm. and say, now I've been on this project since the beginning, I've helped conceptualize this. I mean, I am knee deep in this project. Sure. Now, say two other people come on board and they want to give their opinion. I'm knee deep in this because I've started from the beginning. I'm going to be less willing to change my ways because I've started this from the beginning. I'm already set. I'm, I have my blinders on set for a certain way. And maybe I'll give for you because you started with me. You co-directed right. with me. Right. But these other two people coming on, since it's going to be a group, I might not hear what they have to say, even though their opinions and ideas might be something that where the story needs to go. Yeah. And it could because he's been involved in it so long. So that's why I think maybe they asked him to step back. Yeah, and I'm really glad you said that because that's one of the angles that I was gonna take. Um and we didn't talk about this ahead of time. No. So I'm really glad that you said that because, you know, we're of the same mind there. But the other thing that I was thinking about too is, you know, and you're talking about not being able to take some of those suggestions. It's not necessarily that he wouldn't be able to. He might not want to because of his vision for the story right. or he can't break from what yeah, his vision it's not, was. It's not so much being willing or like have like a negative attitude towards their ideas. But I mean, I mean, my gosh, I mean, I'm, I just think about when I was working on my party source Rex, I wouldn't even take, you know, my custom toy. I wouldn't even take any ideas. I was set. Like I didn't want any help. I just, I knew what I was doing. And I think it's because you start with that idea Right. In your mind, so you don't want help. You kind of you see. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. What it was going to look like, mm-hmm. and maybe it's kind of the same thing with Bob, you know, directing this film from the beginning, of you know. Well, with how much they love him in the studio, that's the thing I was going to say is the potential other angle as well, is that they may have felt like, hey, we don't want you to feel like we're railroading you with changes or trying to destroy your story. And we don't want to ruin our friendship with you by trying to seem like we're coming in and taking over your project. Right. So, you know, how does this work best? You know, you have to imagine, again, all of this is speculation. Everything is speculation. Oh, yeah, it's just a total none speculation none of us are there. Discussion. But I just, that's what I would like to think that it was, is it was a decision, kind of a combination of what you and I both said there. Mm-hmm. It's let's make sure that Bob stays a friend to everybody. And let's just, you know, he's too deep in it. Let's not put that extra stress of coming in and just yeah yeah. saying hey we kind of think maybe it should go this way we don't right yeah um but i mean i also i mean we said it in our post i mean bob's direction is already in the film yes absolutely he's part of it from you know he even though he's not on the project now he is part of that film yeah absolutely without a doubt i mean just as brenda chapman was with brave Absolutely. And everybody before that. Right. Yep. So, okay, wanting but to... good discussion. Yeah, I thought it was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, we didn't so... even talk about that, like, when it was all happening. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Disney Infinity. We want to jump to this a little bit right now, and we want to talk about a couple different things. So, during our last podcast, uh, we talked about how confused we were uh, when we started playing the Wii version, or when I started playing the Wii version. Um and, you know, we had bought the the guidebook that shows you all the missions and all that. And we had talked about it on the last podcast that there were, you know, the missions were less. The You couldn't play two-player in the play sets. You could still play it in the toy boxes. And there's no downloadable pre-built worlds yeah, for the toy was... box. So those were that was what we already talked about. Yeah. So we decided, based on what we were feeling and what we were seeing in this book, 
that it was like we almost felt necessary because we wanted to get the full experience of the game. We wanted to upgrade, and we did to the Wii U. Yes. So we went out, bought the new system, fully invested in it, and decided. Yeah, we bought all, we bought the Wii U console just for this game. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people might say, "Hey, why did you just why buy Xbox or whatever?" Um, we enjoy Mario games, right? As so well. we need the other so stuff as we well. We need the Wii. <laughs> yeah, we have nieces and nephews. They like to play the games that are you know more for that as well too. So we help out. Yeah. But um, so, in addition to that, I will say that it did not disappoint. The Wii U version, which is the same as the Xbox, PlayStation Three, fantastic! What a difference! So before Night- we. In day. Yeah. So Unbelievable. We, so we only talked about those few things in the last podcast. So what we wanted to do is uh, talk about a few more of the things, that, that the differences that we noticed between the Wii version and, let's just say, all the other versions. Obviously, we're speaking from the Wii U, but we know that it's the same as the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox. So in the Wii version, let's just talk about the Incredibles playset real quick, because I've beat that playset in both the Wii and the Wii U. So the chests there are those little like uh, chests that you walk up to and if you're playing as that character when you approach it you can press a button it opens the chest out pops some coins some sparks and then also uh, a costume or some other type of character that you can use in the toy box okay in the wii version there are one of those for each character so in the incredibles you know you've got mr incredible mrs incredible dash violet and syndrome in the wii u version and all other versions it comes with there's three of those vaults or the chests for each character scattered around amongst the different islands the other thing that is massively different if you go from and anybody that's played this knows what i'm talking about if you go from the the incredibles headquarter to either the small island or the big island or from there to the very introductory the docks when you first start the game you have to load into each one of those. So you're driving, let's just say from headquarters, you're gonna to go to the big island. As soon as you get to the bridge, your car will like smack an invisible wall in the Wii version and say, do you wanna load into the the big island now? Oh wow. And you have to sit there and wait for it to load. In the Wii U version, all the other versions, you literally just go from island to island to island. Gosh, I guess I just didn't watch you play enough of the Wii version when we had that. Right. So that's a pretty that's a pretty big oh, difference. Huge. I mean, and so in addition to that, um, well, I guess I was going to say we already mentioned like the 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 missions, but the missions, the the number of missions was different. The number of missions, and then also the um, the challenges. Yeah. Those little challenges where you have to race through and pass all the time checkpoints or collect all the little balls before the time runs out. There's like half of those in the Wii version. Um, the, the one thing that I did kind of appreciate in the Wii version is when you're in the big island or the small island is when you're just trying to explore around the city, the Omnidroids that constantly drop into the city, that doesn't happen in the Wii version. You can just walk around the city and there's like not Omnidroids just constantly falling on you no matter where you are. But it doesn't make the game like it's interesting because you're not constantly agreed but there are times when you're like getting near the end and you're just looking for the capsules and you want to climb up a building and another example is the building's catching on fire it seems like every time you walk past a building one's going the fire alarm's (laughs) going off and you got to go up top and you know break the water thing it doesn't happen in the Wii one so it's a change sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad that one I could go either way on but obviously it's just one more element that doesn't exist in that in that Wii version but outside of the Incredibles playset, I think the most important thing, the biggest difference is, and for anybody that's played any version other than the Wii version, you know this, the introductory toy box when you first put on the game and it says, you know, it takes you through that whole introduction saying like, your, your imagination is a spark and then spark forms and then they all come together and it forms this and then like it takes you and shows you the characters and some of the play sets and yeah and then you get to see like Rapunzel and Wreck-It Ralph and as you're walking through you get to see all these characters that are coming out and then you get to run around the best part you get to run around as Woody in spark form you know so you just see him as like little stars but you get to run around as him already and then you go to the next one you shoot the you know the 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 buzzes the blaster. blaster. Yeah, you get to shoot all that stuff. It's amazing. So that whole thing, which to me took the game to a whole nother level and really got you into it more. You were really excited about the toy box. I mean, you even showed me that. 
Yeah. You were like, you've got to watch this. Right. And then the pre-downloadable uh, bo- toy boxes that they come out with oh. every Thursday. There's like three or four that they come out with every Thursday now. And like, you know, there's nothing wrong with creating your own. But sometimes you just want to go in a pre-built world and, you know, just explore yeah. or, you know, have a can couple people. Can you add things already to a pre-built world? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you can add, cool. delete. You can do whatever you want. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool. So that whole thing is there. Okay, so what I'm going to say now, it could seem harsh. Um, and I'll explain it right after I say it. But I don't think that the Wii version should have been produced. Now, I know that's a difficult thing to say. And obviously, you know, for the reasons I've listed above is why we believe that or why I believe that. But I know that the producers are probably sitting there saying, you know, the Wii is a huge system still. It's almost outselling the Wii U. The Wii U's had some rocky reviews at times. So they're probably feeling like they can't abandon that system because they're probably thinking at the same, on on the flip side of the token, if they don't put it out, people are going to say, how can you just ignore this entire platform, which is so huge and has so many users? Right. But it's times like this that I think of Steve Jobs and some of his rash decisions that he made over the years where, you know, all of a sudden, oh, this doesn't work on my old my first edition iPod or my third edition iPod or my first edition iPad. At some point, you have to say, how much quality, not how much quality, how much content am I going to sacrifice by building this for a lesser system? Because how long has the Wii U, the, the regular Wii been out? Quite a while. I mean, well above a standard system's... I mean, the Wii U came out in, I think it was like five years, so maybe five, six years, seven years that the Wii's been out. It's been out a while. Mm -hmm. So I get the fact that you can't hold back Xbox, PlayStation, with their new versions coming out in the future, as well as the Wii U, based on the limitations of memory and computing power of the Wii, but then not wanting to abandon that system either. So it's a hard thing. But I personally believe, now that I've played both, it's just a totally different game. Like, to give another example, I beat the Incredibles playset on the Wii version in, like, three, three and a half hours. If. Right. I beat the Incredibles collecting all capsules, completing all challenges and missions in, like, nine and a half, ten hours the first time around. I won't even talk about the fact that it crashed. And I had to replay, replay the entire... And I was so, like... I didn't even... I didn't, she, Julie just says to me, she goes, well, why don't you just play, like, Monsters University or Cars or something right now? Because, you know, you're kind of frustrated that your Incredibles game save is completely gone. And I said, nope. And I stayed up, like, the entire night and, like, replayed it so I could get caught up. Yeah. He, he went... I mean, thank goodness it was the weekend, because I don't think you came to bed till like, 9 a.m. <laughs> A little before that. <laughs> but yes, it was very, very late. So again, it's a hard thing. But I mean, like, what are your thoughts on it? Is it, should it have been made? Do you, you, know, do you I, see? I see both sides. Um, yeah. I do agree. The parts that I did see, the Wii version, it was, um, it seems like it was a lot easier. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe it was, you know, for kids, very young kids, I could see them that being a lot easier because you don't have to push buttons to make a ramp go down. It's already down, like in the cars right. play set. Right. Um, the main thing that I will say, and you didn't mention this yet, mm-hmm. the characters. All I can say is I'm glad that the actual physical characters are not, sp- like, game, specified. Game, speci- game system specific? Yes. Yeah. Because we bought the entire Wii U console and we only had to rebuy, you know, well, the game with the starter pack. The starter pack. Right. Well, we exchanged it. Yeah. Yeah. But if we had to bu- rebuy all the characters that you had oh, purchased. There's, yeah, there's no way that that would ever fly. Yeah. I, so I just give up. That's, I think, a really cool thing that they've done because, I mean, they didn't have to do it that way. Well, the one thing to keep in mind, and the one thing that I would like to share with people, especially because of the fact, since you're bringing this up, is that with the PlayStation 4 coming out and the Xbox One coming out, if you take, like, for instance, we ha- we pl- I beat the you know the Incredibles playset, so Mr. Incredible, Mrs. Incredible, all those characters had a lot of experience points that I had gained in the Wii version. Oh, I forgot about this. Even though you own the physical character, when you put it, on the new Wii U version, on that base station, you have to take ownership of that character. 
And what that means is essentially I could take if like if you were at a different if you were, you know, my friend. Okay, let's just say I'll say my buddy Chris. Mm -hmm. We'll go over to Chris's house and I take my Mr. Incredible over there, my Mrs. Incredible over there because he doesn't have it. I put her on on his base. I can still play as Mrs. Incredible in the game, but it doesn't take ownership of Mrs. Incredible. Therefore, it doesn't show up in the Hall of Heroes. Therefore, it doesn't build experience points and all those other things. So that way, I'm not artificially gaining experience points. So when I go back home, all of a sudden, my character has way more, but I didn't play any more in my game. Right. But the unfortunate thing is, is that when I put it on my new base, if I want to play on a new system, you have to take ownership of this, that character. And as soon as you do that, it wipes the character's memory chip on the character and it goes back to zero experience points. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. And now that you bring that up, mm -hmm. I actually want to bring up another thing. Which uh -huh. I, I hope they fix this in the future. Yeah. Um, you've been the main player for Disney Infinity. I have not really played yet. Right. Actually, I haven't played at all. Mm -hmm. um, well, a little couple bit. Couple minutes. Yeah, a couple, couple minutes. Yeah. minutes. Um, but I'm dying to, you know, really dive into, like, the Pirates one to really kind of see that. But we can't save two separate games. Ah, we no, can, yeah, you can, okay, you can save different play sets, different, but like, for instance, on the Incredibles. But what if I to play the Incredibles? Okay, so I've beat the Incredibles, so if Julie wanted to go, you're, yes, you're exactly right, if Julie wanted to go into the Incredibles and start a new mission. Yeah, what if I wanted to play from the beginning, because I haven't She would have it. to delete mine and start over. See, that's kind of a bummer. I, I wish, wish you could save multiple, yes, multiple. Yeah, at least, at least two. Right. Maybe four for families who have kids. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can so see I that. Can, as... I can see that being like a patch that might come, you know, yeah, in and, the future. And I don't know if it's because of the fact of memory. Well, I don't know if it's a fact of how much memory it would take, but I mean, there are so many things. I mean, it keeps track of all the capsules you found. It keeps track of the the vaults that you've opened. Like, there's all these crazy things that it keeps track of, as well as you know the experience points on the physical character itself. I wonder if that ties into it somehow. I don't know. I don't know. But it's an interesting thing to think about, and you're right. That would be something that I would add to a wish list if I could update it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, at the top of the podcast, we talked about the Crystal Infinity character, that Toys R Us exclusive. Well, this last Saturday, September 7th, there was a Toys R Us event, a trading event, where people could go into their local Toys R Us and trade power discs. And then they also offered for sale the Tron power disc, which is a user experience disc. What I think is really cool about that disc and why I think it's probably one of the ones that's... If you're looking to gain experience points, like for me, I was like, yes, <laughs> because the Crystal Infinity character, by using it, you're essentially just getting more experience and you're gaining things faster. Those Tron discs, if you put two of them stacked underneath your character, it essentially converts almost any character into a Crystal Infinity character. The difference is, is that the Crystal Infinity character is gaining faster experience all the time, whereas the po Tron Power Disc gains it in groups. Okay. You'll be playing for a while, and all of a sudden it'll be like, and then whatever you whatever sparks you capture from there are multiplied for a short period of time and then it goes away again. Oh, I see. So it's like almost like a temporary crystal infinity character. Right. Like any of the power discs, you know, it just comes and goes mm -hmm. at random times. But it's a cool way if you are, have a character that may be lacking in experience points or you want to get them to a gold or silver status mm -hmm. in the Hall of Heroes, that's your good way to do it. Hmm. So that's uh, TJ's tip of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, that's one of them. Now, the other thing in Disney Infinity News that's coming up is, speaking of play sets, the Wave 2 of Power Discs is going to be coming out on November 26th. So that's still a ways off. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, they're coming soon. And there's tons more Pixar-themed Power Discs coming. There's going to be a Zerg one. There's going to be a second Finn McMissile. It's going to be great. That I know. You're so excited. Yeah. And what I'm hoping is, and I don't know this, I don't know if Angus from Brave is going to be in Wave 2 or 3. Oh, okay. But that one is going to be coming out in, oh, yeah. in an upcoming Wave 2, so Which that's pretty cool. Which has me wondering, since they're going to do Angus, are they going to eventually have Merida? Right. We talked about that, you know, how great that, that would be. I would love oh. it. Are you kidding me? We, that's yeah. like my number one. Oh, we talked about it. It would be amazing to be able to transform the land and the sky to and, and playing a play set 
To Scotland. In Scotland. And go into like the woods and they could have like a witch's cottage or something. Oh my God. It'd be amazing. Yes. That playset needs to happen. And I know that, you know, there's, oh man, there's so many playsets that are coming out, but that one, I feel like if it would be cool. And you know what I wish? I wish, I hope the playset, if this would be like my dream, (laughs) I want like, like mom bear or mum bear. Right. I want the Eleanor as the bear and I want Merida. And then I want like a more do in there. That's that's Ooh. my playset. So you wouldn't want Queen wouldn't Eleanor want necessarily by herself. You would want person. her as the bear. I would want her as the bear. I think that's a great idea because then you could use Merida and you could use the bear. Fergus or Mum Bear to try to fight more do. Right. Holy cow. That's what I want. Disney Infinity. That would be amazing. That's what I want. Cuz like one of the things that I did which was really a ton of fun um it, and it would be different in this scenario, but I played as Syndrome, fighting Syndrome in the final battle. And it's hilarious, the things that he says. So if you like play that game, you need to play as Syndrome when you're fighting Syndrome because he comments about himself and how good he looks when you're fighting him and all those kind of things. It's hilarious. But that would be amazing. I know. And you know how um, Edna mode kept popping up for you to go to missions? Yeah. It could be the witch. Yeah. Oh, my God. Gosh. <laughs> I think we need I to just, stop the podcast. I just blew my mind. Stop with the this. podcast. <laughs> I need this. Oh, that is a good one. I know. Well, speaking of upcoming. I mean, it helps because Brave's like my favorite. Yeah. One of. I mean, right. it's, I, just, I can't, it's I can't too, say, yeah. but gosh, I want that so bad. So, speaking of upcoming play sets, the Toy Story in space playset is coming out see that makes sense another reason that the brave one needs to happen because we've got in space we've got underwater with nemo we've got all these other things there needs to be a scotland I know. so okay toy story in space coming out it's going to be a two-pack that's going to contain buzz and jesse with the playset uh, crystal token which is like buzz's like emblem or whatever and then woody will be sold separately the playset is coming out october 22nd now here's where Woody gets a little confusing. Uh, it's listed on Walmart's website as a pre-order exclusive coming out on October 1st. So you can get it on October 1st, play Woody in the toy box mode, just not in the playset till the playset comes out on October 22nd. But GameStop also has, very interestingly, and we went in there this weekend to investigate it, they still have Woody listed as an October 1st release mm-hmm. for a pre-order as well. Now they're Playset was originally listed as October 21st, and it got updated to October 21st along with everybody else. 22nd. 22nd. Yep, sorry. But it'll be interesting to see what comes of that. But from what we've heard, the only place that is exclusive and should be truly expecting an October early release of Woody is at Walmart. So if you want to do that, uh, link through our site or just go to Walmart and search for the Disney Infinity Woody character. You can find him there. So basically, what he's saying, everybody, is I can enjoy TJ until October 22nd <laughs> when this Toy Story playset comes out because he's already told me, I'm so excited. This is going to be my favorite Oh, one. I already know it's going to be my favorite one, even though it's going to be hard to compete with The Incredibles. Oh, gosh. You're going to play this for like, you're going to have like hour-long benders <laughs> just playing Disney Infinity. I know. I love collecting all the capsules and everything. I know you do. Yeah. So the other thing that I heard while listening to the Inside Infinity podcast, uh, it's just a podcast that talks about all things just Disney Infinity, is a really cool app that I used at the trading event and just keeping track of things. And it's an app in the iOS store called InfiniList. Uh, It's just I-N-F-I-N-I-L-I-S-T, all one word. So look up InfiniList. And it helps you track... We'll also link to it. Absolutely. But it'll help you track all of your power disks and characters that you have. And you can even uh, put in multiples. So if you have, like, duplicates... So when we went to the trading event, I'm like, yeah, I have four of these disks. You know, you can keep track of how many you have and how many you want to get rid of. So it's really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's not earth-shattering. And it's a free app, so that makes it even better. But, uh, you know, it's just a lot of... It's just cool to, like, track everything and see everything you have. And if you're ever talking to somebody and go, ah, do I? Don't I? So cool thing so just keep that in mind as like a little if you're interested in it pick that guy up because it's pretty cool all right so let's wrap up the podcast with a look of october overall because october is it should be called uh, pix october (laughs) 
because <laughs> it is so cool. So Pixtober. We, Pixtober. <laughs> so we have October 1st. We've already mentioned the Woody Disney Infinity character is going to be an early pre-order release. October 8th, we'll see the digital release of Monsters University. So if you want to watch the movie, you can get it on October 8th. Fantastic. Get it like that. You know uh, we will. Absolutely. Oh, I can't wait to watch it on our TV or downstairs. Watch it at home. Are you kidding? I mean, we've already seen it like eight times. Uh, but pausing. <laughs> oh god. That we can go through all the Are frames. Are you kidding me? <laughs> October eighth is going to be a late night. And I'm interested to see. You know, if it's the full set of extras that are going to be on the Blu-ray or not, all that is yet to be seen. Ooh, so, I don't know. Yeah, so we'll see. I, I'm saying no. I'm saying that no, that'll be... And I'm saying yes. Okay. I think it will be. I don't think so. I Let's don't think see. It's Anybody have else listening to the podcast have an opinion? What do you think? I think will it will it have be the full set Blu-ray. Or just, just the movie and maybe something else, like a trailer or something? Yeah, I think maybe there'll be like two special things. I don't think it's going to be the full. Okay. So we covered October 1st, October 8th. Now we've got October 16th with Toy Story of Terror hitting TVs everywhere. Can't wait. I going to be fantastic. October 22nd, just a few days after Toy Story of Terror, Toy Story in Space comes out, the, the full playset for Disney Infinity. And then October 29th, just a few days after that, we see the Blu-ray release of Monsters University. So that's going to be the full, you get that in multiple different versions. And if you haven't bought all of the, uh, like, for instance, if you haven't bought Mike or Randall uh, with Disney Infinity or for the game Disney Infinity, if you buy Monsters University at Walmart, it comes with, you can choose uh, either Mike or Randall as a free character that you can get along with the the movie. So if you haven't bought those, you can always pick it up there. Mm -hmm. But if not, Amazon has great prices. They're probably the best prices that are out there right now. But Disney Store has a lithograph pre-sale with it. Best Target Buy has stuff. Target will have something, I'm sure. I don't. I don't think we've seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Um, but additionally, on October 29th, it's not just Monsters U coming out. It's actually Cars, the first Cars in 3D. So when this came out, I was like, what? What? I feel like it's already been out. But if you look at even like the director's cut, that huge pack that came with the John Lassiter truck, it's it, not in there. It didn't come with that. So we Cars, checked ours. Right. So Cars 1 is going to be coming out on Blu-ray 3D on October 29th as well. At this point, we haven't seen anything saying that there's going to be any new features on it. So it'll be interesting to see how people receive that, if it's worth you know, getting that just for the Blu-ray upgrade. And it's not even being sold like some movies are being sold now where it's just the the 3D Blu-ray. It's the full combo pack again. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if there's anything. That, I, I would not anticipate that there's any new... Uh, features that are going to be included on it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I always like extended director's commentary or commentary, more commentary on like the short. So who know, or maybe a cartoon. Yeah, maybe it'll have like, yeah, that'd be really cool if it had an exclusive cartoon, yeah. uh, Cars tune. But I haven't seen anything that says that yet though. So we shall see. Yeah. Well, that about wraps up episode 19 of the Pixar Post podcast. Wow. Yeah. Pretty crazy just saying 19 all of a sudden. It's creeping up on us. It goes so fast. I know. Yeah. Pretty soon we'll be at 400. And hopefully all of you are still listening then. (laughs) (laughs) So anyways, wrapping up episode 19 again, signing off, I'm TJ. And I'm Julie. And be sure to stay tuned to PixarPost.com all week for the latest Pixar news. (laughs) 